some smooth plywood right there. The, the vinyl itself doesn't have a very strong adhesive on it, so we're going with some Gorilla Glue, baby. This is a 2,500 pound winch. It's pretty hefty. As you can see, uh, it's one of those ones that's meant to go on like a four wheeler or a quad or an ATV. We're gonna be using this as our mechanism for raising and lowering the bottom panel here. So we're gonna, it's not gonna go on today. We're gonna have to put some infrastructure in the inside first. I have to do the framing of the door and the windows that'll be the actual living space right behind this door and then see how much space we got to work with so this is going to either get ended up mounted ended up being mounted underneath under here and then the cable will come up to a pulley it'll be mounted here and then a cable will be attached to the door so when it opens on one side it can pull open and close the door and then there will also be chains attached to the door to hold it at a static level so the idea is this ramp is going to be taken out eventually this ramp is just dead weight uh, it's, it's nice to have right now to hold the gate at, at a semi-flat level but it's not it's not a permanent solution the permanent solution is the winch plus the chains uh, on the door to hold chains to hold it and put in place winch to open and close it top panel we have a 330 pound linear actuator I believe this is a 12 inch stroke so this will extend a foot about this far and when we mount it to the top again to the infrastructure on the inside of the truck and then uh, it'll be neutral sitting like this and when it extends it'll open the top panel out and of course obviously it's going to be electronically controlled so the idea is you know I'll be able to press a couple buttons the pack pad the, the porch will come out and the roof will go up what we're gonna be doing today is applying this weather I don't know what you want to call it rubber weather stripping whatever it is uh, along the bottom of the door like this to cover up the hinges and to block the water from getting in in the crack forming a semi-airtight seal. 
and we have uh, eight foot aluminum strips that we'll use to mount that on the bottom of the paddle. We've also got an aluminum strip that's going to go at the top here so that when this is closed it'll close that gap and then we're going to do stripping on the inside of the top panel so that when it closes it will form an airtight seal and then we got weather stripping to go on the inside of the frame so that when the door is shut it's also forming a seal there as well so I think the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to install so the, the, the uh, opening and closing mechanisms aren't going in today I'm going to install some temporary locking mechanisms because I do need to make some runs to the store with the truck to get some more wood and we got to have a sturdy locked closing door for that so I'm going to install some temporary uh, bolt locks on the top and bottom panels on the inside so that we can actually use this to go drive and then we'll get the uh, vinyl installed on the top and hopefully get the aluminum installed as well and uh, by the end of today hopefully we'll have an actual stealth stealth looking uh, back door. Yesterday I kind of learned the hard way. I've never done any wrapping before, never worked with vinyl. It's a lot easier just to get it on there first and then reposition it once it's on there. Don't try to get it on there and then get that one section perfect and then move on to the next section. Just get the whole thing on there and then move it in place. I could be wrong though, maybe this would be even worse.
So I'm gonna get another bolt on at the end here, but for the most part, this is a super secure, it's tight. It's tight on the bottom. There's no way there's gonna be any kind of a, this water should just come run right off there. It's about as good as I can do with the hinges anyway. For a $9, Foam rubber uh, garage door seal, I think this is, from Home Depot.
first floor. Subfloor. Feels like a floor. It's flat, it's solid. Never used one of those jigs before, but uh, I mean, it turned out a lot better, a lot closer than it would have if I tried to do it by hand. I wanted to get it at least fitted and see how it looks, make sure everything was solid before I start adding any kind of glue or insulation sealer. So we'll go ahead and start adding in some of that now. Turn out pretty well. So we got the door stealthed up with the vinyl. Uh, it's not completely done yet. There's still gonna be some finishing touches there. Uh, and we got the flooring in. 
So it's not fastened yet. I'm not going to actually permanent fasten the, the plywood to the framing yet because I do need to run some piping underneath to go from this end to that end. Um, my black tank, or my gray tank and my fresh tanks are likely not going to be on the same side. My restroom is going to be over here, my bathroom, and my sink is going to be over here for the kitchen. So I need to have a feed line up to the sink and then a drain for the gray back over if, I don't know, again, I don't know which side the gray tank is going to be on, so I'm just going to run a line just in case before I actually fasten the flooring down, just in case, you know, the stuff is there in case I need to use it. I don't have to rip everything back up to put the piping in. So that's it. I'm going to wait to put any flooring in until after I get the walls and the ceiling. That'll be what's next. And uh, just so I don't damage it, you know, if I'm moving around in here and dropping stuff and stuff like that. So that's it.